Hi, my name is Wambui and I'm absolutely delighted to be back at Purple Valley here in Goa for the seventh year in a row. Today I'm really excited to be sharing with you the second part of the primary sequence. Last year, Carolina and I recorded the half primary up to Navasana and this year we'd like to continue and conclude the full primary sequence. Please note that this video is not meant to be practiced alone as its own full practice. So we expect you to have done sun salutations, standing postures and the seated postures in the primary sequence joining us at Navasana. And as always, it's best that you practice with a teacher who is knowledgeable and experienced and qualified in teaching Ashtanga Yoga to get the most optimum uh, benefit out of your yoga practice. So if you haven't come to Purple Valley for your yoga holiday, I highly suggest that you book your trip as soon as possible. And in fact, I hear that February is the best time of the year to come to Purple Valley. Thank you. And Carolina is finishing her last Navasana, the fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. And she'll cross her legs, inhale, lifting, exhale, taking it back. And she moves through her upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Bhujapi Dasana. So, to begin, she's going to walk the feet to the outside of each hand and bring the hands a little further back. Now, the important thing is you're establishing a comfortable shelf on the upper arm so that you can sit down and comfortably balance. Maybe try lifting one leg up and the other. So, it's that kind of stability you need in the arms. So, in the beginning you can have the feet, start to walk the feet as close as you need. Find your position where you can comfortably hold. And so if it's here, go ahead and hold it with a head down for five breaths, okay? Carolina is now going to go deeper into the pose. So now she can bring the right foot over the left and keep the feet to the front, head down, okay? And once you've practiced this pose and you are progressing, you can start to move the feet back and bring the forehead, the head even further down to the floor. And eventually, as you continue to practice, you can take the feet up. Please remember it takes time to progress in these poses, so please choose the pose, the variation that suits you best. And after five breaths, you can put the feet down, inhale, lift the head up, hold the pose and exhale and she will come out the same way she came into the pose good and step back good moving through upward facing dog and downward facing dog okay and now Carolina will move through the full pose in its entirety so Inhaling and she jumps right over left, head up, beautiful, and exhale, and the chin goes to the floor. Five breaths here, one, two, three, four, five, inhale, head up, hold the pose and exhale and release the feet, transition if you can into Bakasana and then you can step or jump back. Exhale, lovely, inhale, exhale, okay, Kurmasana into Supta Kurmasana. Come in the same way as you did for Bhuja Pidasana, so you're going to step the feet to the outside of the hands and now for this one, you'll just come to sit on the floor. So the hands have to come a little further back, sit down. And now we're trying to extend the legs in front of you, the hands under the legs. So 
Stay here and breathe head down. Relax the head down. Two, three, four, five. And Kurmasana. So you'll want to turn the heels, the palms up, moving the hands. And if you cannot reach the hands, you can have a towel here to go ahead and hold and grab. And then the feet, we try to move the feet closer together. So choose, find your position that you can hold and breathe. And if you can start, you can bring the right over the left. Mm -hmm. Good. And hold. One, two, three, four, five. And to come out of the pose in the beginning, you can release the feet and bring the hands to the floor, head up. And now just try to work lifting the hips up a moment, inhaling, try to get a little bit of air and try to see if you can hold it. Good. And then you can transition, just take the feet back or step or jump back. Moving upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Good. And now Carolina will do Kurmasana, Supta Kurmasana in its entirety. So eventually the legs will be straight on the floor, chest down, chin, resting on the chin, chin up. Two, three, four, five. And transitioning into Supta Kurmasana. Now please note that Carolina is an advanced practitioner, so she has a certain level of strength and flexibility. Please only try this if you are comfortable with the leg behind the neck. Okay. And eventually, yes, the hands clasp behind the back. Breathing five times here. One, two, three, four, five. And then you can release the hands, bring the hands to the floor, keep the legs where they are and inhale, lift the hips up. Hold the pose and exhale. And then on the next inhalation, moving into Bakasana position. Good. And then exhale, jump back. Beautiful. Inhale, exhale. Okay. And next pose, Garbha Pindasana. She's going to inhale, come through to sit down, straighten the legs. Good. Exhale. Good. And now we start. For this pose, we're first going to do the um, modification if you are still working towards your lotus. So you can go ahead, cross the legs and have, as Carolina is demonstrating, the hands clasped around. And hold the pose for five breaths. One, two, three, four, five. And now she will take five, a, ro a count of five to roll around the mat going the right side first so about five breaths to complete a circle and then she comes back to the front and kukutasana inhale lifting the hips up good breathe one two three four 
five, good. And go ahead, transition back. Stepping or jumping back, moving through, upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. And now Carolina will show the pose in its entirety with the Padmasana lotus position. So, and now Carolina will show Garbha Pindasana in its full entirety. So she's going to inhale, come through, sit down, and exhale, straighten the legs. Okay. And now she'll take the right foot in first, followed by the left into her Padmasana lotus position. And then starting with the right arm, it's going to go through the leg and then the left. She's going to bend the elbows and bring the hands close. And you're trying to cup the chin, the chin fingers by the ears. Good, as much as you can, good. Breathe. One, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. Now she drops her head into her hands and is going to roll five times to the right. Two, three, four, five. And now she comes up into Kukutasana using the strength of the arms. And Mula Bandha is released here. Five breaths. Two, three, four, five. Good. And now moving out of the pose and transitioning upward facing dog and downward facing dog good okay badha konasana with an inhalation come to sit down and on the same inhalation go ahead and take the soles of the feet together you can use the hands to open the feet like a book now carolina has quite a bit of flexibility in the hips but for those who have less, it's a nice idea to really keep the feet active, opening exactly. And then she's going to exhale and come down. Good. And you can either bring the chin or the head to the floor. And if your head doesn't come close to the floor, no problem. Wherever you find yourself, stay and breathe, relax in the pose and notice the shift your body undergoes as you breathe relax and hold this stretch three four five and she's going to inhale coming up and now She's going to round the spine, roll the head down, feet towards, sorry, head towards the feet or touching. Two, three, four, five. And she's going to inhale and exhale. Good. Okay, and go ahead, release the pose, cross the legs, transitioning out of the pose into the next pose. Inhale and exhale. Okay, Upavishta Konasana. Inhale, come through to sit down, and then extend the legs in front of you. Now the legs should be of course wide apart but not so far, far wide that the feet start to flop in and out and you can you should be able to take hold of the sides of the feet still. So inhale lifting the head up a moment and exhale come down as far as you can. So either the head is going towards the floor, forehead is on the floor 
And like Carolina has demonstrated, the chin eventually can get to the floor in the full expression of the pose. Two, three, four, five. Now for the B pose, Carolina will show you two variations. So the first one, she inhale, lifts the head up only, holds here and exhales. And she can come up with the straight legs and holds here, head up, point the toes, breathe. Two, three, four, five. Good, and you can release the pose, good. Now, if you cannot keep the feet, legs straight, that's not a problem, so she's gonna show you. She can inhale, lift the head up, hold the pose and exhale, good. And now just bend the knees Take hold of the feet again and then extend the legs as much as you can and still look up and breathe. Two, three, four, five. And inhale, cross the legs. Transition out of the pose. Inhaling. Exhaling. Okay. Supta Konasana. Inhale. Come through to sit down. And lie down. Straighten the legs completely and exhale here. Hold. Good. On the next inhale, go ahead and take the legs up. Open the legs wide. And this time you're holding the big toes. With the first two fingers and thumbs, go ahead and take hold. And this is all, stay here for five breaths now. One, two, this is the stiti of the pose, the state of the pose. Three, four, five. And now she's going to inhale, roll down, exhale directly, head down, and inhale, head up. Hold the pose and exhale. Okay, good. Crossing the legs, transitioning. <coughs> Inhaling and exhaling. Supta Parangushtasana with an inhalation. She's going to do the, do the same thing. Come through, sit down, lie down, exhale. Good. Okay. Now we start with the right leg. So the left arm comes on top of the uh, left thigh and inhale, take hold of the right big toe. Okay. And exhale, lift the head up. Breathe. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, head down. Exhale, open the leg to the right. Look to the left. Good. One, two, three. Good. Left foot is pointed. Four, five. Inhale. Bring that right leg to center. Exhale. Lift the head up. Inhale. Head down. Exhale. Release the leg. Good. Same thing. Second side. Right hand on top of the right thigh. Inhale. Take hold of the left big toe and exhale, head up. One, two, three, four, five. Inhale, head down only, and exhale, open the leg as much or as little as you can to the left. Good. And that right hand is actively pushing on the right thigh, good. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, bring that leg back to center. Exhale, head up only. Inhale, head down. Exhale, release the leg down. Okay, and now just come to sit up. Cross the legs. 
and transition through. Inhaling and exhaling. Okay, and Ubhaya Padangushtasana. Again, come to sit down on the inhalation and exhale, lie down completely. Good. Good. Okay, on the next inhalation, Carolina will take her legs over her and she's going to take hold of the big toes here. Good, and this is one exhalation only. And then the next inhalation, she's going to roll. Good. And pointing the toes, head back, looking up. Five breaths. Two, three, four, five. Good, and releasing the pose. Now, this is actually quite a challenging pose in the beginning, so Carolina will now show you a variation where she bends the legs as she works towards getting the control to do it with straight legs. So she exhales here and the next inhalation, go ahead and just bend the knees, find your pose, find the balance, and then you can extend the legs as much as you can. Of course, keeping a bend if you need to. Three, four, five, good. And crossing the legs. Stepping back, moving through, inhaling and exhale. Good. Okay, next pose Urdva Mukha Paschimottanasana. Same principle. She's going to inhale, come through to sit down, and extend the legs, lie down, exhale. Okay. And on the next inhalation, the legs come up. She takes hold of the sides of the feet and exhales here. And on the next inhalation, she's bringing herself up. Good, to balance and bringing her feet towards her head, pointing the toes, breathing. One, strong Udiyana Bandha. Two, three, Four, five, inhale, straighten the elbows, head back, hold the pose and exhale. Good. This is a challenging pose and it takes quite a bit of finesse to work it. So let's show another option here. She'll lie down again. And then inhaling, taking the legs over. Taking hold from the sides. Exhale here. And then inhale, go ahead, bending the knees. Find your position as best you can. Head towards the knees, even if the legs are not fully straight. So you can bend in a little more. Good. Two, three, four, five. Inhale, head back, hold the pose and exhale. Great. Okay, and release the pose, inhale. Taking it back. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. Setu Bhandasana. Bhandasana. Inhale, come through, sit down. Lie down. Now please note, if you have any neck issues going on, please use the variation that we are going to show you. So with the legs completely straight, she's going to inhale and prepare the legs, bringing the knees to touch, uh, sorry, the, you're on the edges of the feet and the heels are touching. Good, okay. And on the exhale, Carolina will take her arms by her ears and then Inhale, bringing the top of the head on the floor, lifting the hips up and hold here. And eventually you can work towards bringing the heels together and straightening the legs. Three, four, five, and slowly bend the knees, release. Good. And eventually, the full expression of the pose, same idea. Prepare the legs. 
prepare the head. And crossing the fingers, holding here. Okay, and after five breaths, releasing the pose, coming out, good. Okay, and coming to sit up. Crossing the legs, transitioning through. And now we move to Urdhvathanyurasana, the back bending pose. So here we would like to show you three options. So let's start with a nice position lying down. So you come here and you start from always a lying down position. So inhale, bending the knees. Now if you'll notice Carolina, she brings the feet close to her hips. And the feet are, toes are facing the front and the feet are hip width apart. So please check that you have the proper alignment in the body. Okay, and now we're just going to lift the hips up. And you can hold here. If you have the flexibility, you can take it further by crossing the fingers and trying to work the shoulders under. Hold here for five breaths. Hips are coming up, breathing. Good. One, two, three, four, five. And slowly release the pose. And we'll move to the next option. So the hands come back to the ears like we just did for Setu Bandhasana. And now we're going to come to the top of the head, but the elbows will stay bent. So go ahead again, lifting the hips up, coming on to the top of the head. Stay here. One, two, three, four, five, and slowly release down. So in the Ashtanga Yoga tradition, we do three sets of this pose of minimum of five breaths. I'm giving you three options here. So you can do one of each as Carolina is demonstrating, or you can just work with one specific pose for all those three repetitions. And the final full expression of the pose, full Urdhvathanyurasana. Again, she's inhaling, and this time you'll notice her arms are straight and she's holding, breathing one, Two, three, four, five, and slowly come down. Very good. And after back bending, we do our forward bending, Paschimottanasana. So just come to sit up. And if you have a teacher or somebody you practice with, a practice friend, you can always get a nice little adjustment here to release the lower back after that back bending. Never pushing on the spinal column, but rather working to release the muscles on each side of the spine. And if you're practicing at home on your own, just hold this pose for a minimum of 10 deep, relaxed, slow breaths here. So that is the full primary, or the second half of the full primary. And now we move to the finishing sequence. So we're going to inhale, moving into Salamba Sarvangasana. So legs up, hips up, and support yourself 
on your lower back. Good. Breathe here. Keep in mind now that the breathing in this finishing sequence is much more, is much slower, much more relaxed. We have now finished the more active dynamic part of the asana practice and we move to the more restorative, relaxing part of the, the sequence. So 10 to 15 deep breaths here. Let's say this is five, six, seven, eight. You can look up to the big toes. Nine, ten, eleven. Good, and as Carolina did, she self-adjusted herself further into the position. If you can, you can always slide the shoulders, coming straighter. But remember, in the beginning, start where you are. 13, 14, and 15. Moving into Halasana. Now, if the legs do not come all the way to the ground, so let's say Carolina stops here for a moment. No problem, just hold here. Keep supporting yourself. And this is your pose. If the legs can come down, if the feet can come down, go ahead and take the feet down. Keep the legs together. Relaxing the toes, yes. And now she can transition, crossing the fingers, good. And Carolina can even bring her palms together. Exactly, fingers crossed, good. This is the pose, good. Breathe. So choose your option. Remember to get the, make the asana where you can breathe comfortably, relaxing the mind, getting the full benefits for the spine and the nervous system. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And Karnapidasana. She bends the knees and brings them beside each ear. Now the feet are still together. And again, same principle. If the legs are still hovering up, keep supporting yourself, hands on the lower back. And if you have a friend or a teacher, they can give a nice adjustment here, pushing the knees in. Good. And Carolina, her back is quite straight here, but it's always nice to get a little lift here to go deeper into the pose. Relaxing here. Releasing in the spine. Let's say this is eight, nine, ten. Good. And now go back to the first pose, that shoulder stand. Transitioning into Urva Padmasana. So again, you need your lotus pose in this one. If you are working towards it, just come to a nice, comfortable cross legged position here. Keep supporting yourself, okay? If you are comfortable with the lotus, go ahead and take the lotus. Right first, followed by the left. And then you can release the back and bring the hands by the knees. Notice that Carolina's arms are straight. And breathe 10 times. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And Pindasana, she's going to bring the knees towards the floor and 
hold, take hold. Same principle, if you don't have your lotus and you're supporting yourself on the lower back, no problem. Just try to bring the feet in closer as much as you can. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and slowly releasing the pose, coming down to Matsyasana. So you're keeping the legs as they are, either in a cross-legged position or a half lotus or this full lotus Padmasana. So Carolina brings the legs down, knees to the ground and she has the top of the head on the floor she lifted her chest so there's a little back bend going on here and again if you have a friend or somebody to help this is a nice place to give a little bit of release good Again, 10 breaths, and she's holding on to the feet here. Even if you don't have your lotus, you can still just place the hands on the thighs. Okay, that's about 10 breaths. So transitioning into Uttana Padasana. We try to keep the upper body as it is, and we just transition the legs and the arms, palms touch, good. Good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, good. And slowly release the pose. Okay. And then come to sit up. Cross the legs, transition through, inhaling and exhaling. Now we do Shirshasana headstand, so bring the knees to the floor, find the position. Okay. Lifting the hips up. And you can go ahead and hold this pose. Keep finding the stability with the knees in the chest. As you get more comfortable, as Carolina is demonstrating here, she brings the knees up and eventually she straightens the legs. And in Patabi Joyce's book called Yoga Mala, he explains that Shirshasana headstand eventually becomes more like a meditation mudra. So less of something physical asana and more of a meditative state when you hold this. So that means try to extend the breathing as much as you can. And being able to hold this position with comfortable relaxed breathing means working the stability for a good, good long time. And so after you've held this pose, minimum of 10 deep breaths, 10 to 15 deep breaths. If you can, you can go ahead and bring the legs to 90 degrees. Otherwise, you can just release the, the legs down and come to rest. Good. Hold here. Minimum one minute.
And this is always a nice thing to receive after your shirshasana, a little press for the lower back, release for the spine. Okay. And then you can come up and move into your transition. So straighten the legs, inhaling, exhaling. Okay. And come through to sit down. Okay. Badha Padmasana. For this, we'll show you the first variation if you do not have your lotus yet. So go ahead and just come to a comfortable cross-legged position here. Okay, and you can bring the left arm behind the back, followed by the right. And you can go ahead and just take hold of the forearms or the elbows and inhale, lifting the chest a moment. Exhale, coming down. Maybe, let's say you stop here. This is great. Keep relaxing the head down. As the body begins to open, as you keep practicing, you'll notice the body will begin to want to go further down. But take your time with this process. Good. So you would hold here for 10 breaths. Now we can show the second part. You can either work your full lotus or your half lotus. So go ahead and take the full lotus, right leg in, followed by the left. Okay. And now the final badha bound position is with the um, hands behind the back, taking hold of the big toes. Again, please choose whichever variation is suiting you best. So you can keep, even if you have your lotus but you're not quite getting the bind, no problem. Just keep holding on to the elbows and exhale, come down as much as you can. You can bring the forehead to the ground and eventually the chin touching. And we are trying to keep the hips and the pelvis towards the ground. So keep the Mula Bandha active, grounding ourselves even as we go forward. So 10 deep breaths here. Eight, nine, ten, and inhale, coming up. Good. This is a little additional. It often feels very nice to do. So you can either keep the hands bound as Carolina did, or just release them and bring them behind the back. And a little roll the shoulders open, a little chest opener. It's nice to do after that forward bend. You can take the head back as much or as little as feels comfortable for you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. And Padmasana. So keeping the legs as they are. And this is a very nice place to practice one of Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, Stira Sukham Asanam. Comfortable, steady, relaxed posture. So you'll notice Carolina's spine is straight. Her arms are straight. Her fingers are active. Okay. Her bandhas are engaged. But her chin is relaxed. And most importantly of all, her breathing is relaxed. So we are taking 10 deep breaths here, allowing the breath to flow without any obstruction. One, two, 
two. Three, staying alert, staying steady, but staying very comfortable. Pleasant feeling. Let's say this is five. We make that sound breathing as we have made throughout the practice, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. Light constriction in the back of the throat. Seven. Eight. Nine. Good. If you are working towards the full pose as Carolina has, we're going to keep the feet crossed easily. And now watch the placement of your hands. We don't want to have the hands beside the hips because that'll be very difficult to lift the hips up. We'd like to have the hands in the middle of the thighs. And so I'm going to take the first option which is just lifting the hips up and keeping the toes on the floor if you have a nice comfortable even with half lotus you can start to work just having one foot in on the floor and if you have the nice padmasana position we'll go ahead and lift the hips up and only the using the strength of the hands and your bandhas you come up breathe one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Slowly release the pose. Good. And now you can find your way to a comfortable <clears throat> final resting pose after you've gone through your final transition. Good. So this is commonly known as Shavasana or Sukhasana position. Now you want to completely rest here. The legs are about the width of the mat, the feet are about width of the mat. Arms are straight down, a little bit beside the body. Your palms can face up or down. Carolina is going to take a much deserved rest here. Minimum five to 10 minutes if you have them. Close the eyes. Allow the eyes to sink into the back of the head. Allow the full weight of the head to sink into the mat. And now relax your face, relax all expression in your face. Oftentimes we hold a lot of patterns of tension and subconscious patterns of emotion and reaction in our facial muscles. And this is a very nice opportunity to release all that. Allow your face to be neutral. Relax all the little muscles around the eyes. Relax the jaw and the mouth and the tongue. Create a sense of space, a sense of expansion. And a sense of well-being. So that we can access this deep reservoir of peace that we have within us.
and relax the fingers and the toes. Relax even the space between the fingers and the toes. Relax the hands and the feet. Relax the wrists and the elbows. Sorry, relax the wrists and the ankles. Now you can release the elbows down and towards the ground. Release the shoulders. Release the back of the neck. Feel the space between the back of the neck and the mat. Let that space be here, that natural curvature. And feel the natural curve of the spinal column. Allow that natural curve in the lower back to be there. Relax the hips, the pelvis. Relax the quadriceps, the tops of the thighs. Really feel like your muscles, the big muscles in the legs are melting away from the bones. Relax the knees. and relax the shin bone and the calf muscle. And if you are practicing in a northern country, it's a nice idea before you begin this final relaxation to put on socks or long sleeves or your favorite blanket just to stay warm and comfortable. Continue to stay here for as long as you are able. Never rush out of this pose. Give yourself enough time to move the fingers and the toes, start to circle the ankles and the wrists. Give yourself little stretches coming out of the pose as slowly as you came into the pose. You can rest to one side, that always feels good. And only when you are ready, slowly, slowly coming out of the pose. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you, Purple Valley. It's been my absolute pleasure and honor to be back here again and to work with Carolina again to give you the rest of the full primary series as taught by Sharat Joyce in the tradition of Patabi Joyce. Thank you so much. Hope to see you one day here at Purple Valley. <laughs>